And now, Sean and Jenny will bring us our readings. Today's Bible reading is taken from the book of Psalms, chapter 71, verses 14 to 22. Psalms, chapter 71, verses 14 to 22. But I will hope continually and will praise you yet more and more. My mouth shall be of your righteousness and your salvation all the day, for I do not know their limits. I'll go in the strength of the Lord God. I will make mention of your righteousness of yours only. O oh God, you have taught me from my youth, and to this day I declare your wondrous words. Now also, when I am old and way headed, O oh God, do not forsake me until I declare your strength to this generation, your power to everyone who is to come. Also, your righteousness, O oh God, is very high, you who have done great things. O oh God, who is like you? You who have shown me great and severe troubles shall revive me again and bring me up again from the depths of the earth. You shall increase my greatness and comfort me from every side. Also, with the loot I praise you and your faithfulness, O oh my God. To you I sing with the heart, O oh Holy One of Israel. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is taken from Luke 2, verse 25 to 38. Luke 2, verse 25 to 38, and this can be found on page 76 at the back portion of the Bible. At that time, there was a man named Simeon living in Jerusalem. He was a good, God fearing man and was waiting for Israel to be saved. The Holy Spirit was with him, and that assured him that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's promised Messiah. Led by the Spirit, Simeon went into the temple when the parents brought the child Jesus into the temple to do for him what the law required. Simeon took the child in his arms and gave thanks to God. Now, Lord, you have kept your promise, and you may let your servant go in peace. With my own eyes I have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all people, a light to reveal your will to the Gentiles and bring glory to your people Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at the things Simeon said about him. Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child is chosen by God for the destruction and the salvation of many in Israel. He will be a sign from God which many people will speak against and so reveal their secret thoughts and sorrow like a sharp sword will break your own heart. There was a very old prophet, a widow named Anna, daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She had been married only seven years and was now 84 years old. She never left the temple day and night. She worshipped God, fasting and praying. That very same hour she arrived and gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were waiting for God to set Jerusalem free. This is the word of the Lord. Oh, thanks be to God. God. George will come to us now. So we will pray for George. Lord be with George as he talks to us about your word. We thank you for his work on this subject and we hope that it touches our hearts. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning, George. I'd like to think this morning about God, me and aging. One of the things we share is that we're all growing older, we're all senescent. This is one of the facts of life in our present bodies and on this present earth. None of us can escape the fact of aging. 
Of course, this is a, a global issue in that life expectancy is increasing across the globe. The average world life expectancy is currently 73.4 years. Italy has the highest life expectancy for males, 82.2 years, and Japan for females, 88.0 years. So those are the places to live. At the lower end of the spectrum, average life expectancy in Nigeria is 53.9 years, and Chad is just below at 53.7 years. Of course, ageing is also a national issue here in the UK, and it's going to have significant impact on our social fabric, our economy, and our healthcare provision. A boy born today in the UK has a one in five chance of living to be 90 years old, and a girl, one in three chance. In the UK in 2011, there were nine million people aged 65 or older. 10 years later, it had risen to 11 million. Today, there are 12 million. By 2026, it's expected there will be 14 million, 17 million by 2035, and 22 million by 2072. That will represent 27% of the total population. So aging populations are one of the challenges that all nations of the world are having to face. But I want this to be a pastoral and personal talk rather than a statistical one. And start by asking the question, how do we view the reality of growing older? Do our advancing years bring with them a sense of fulfilment and fruitfulness, or do they bring a sense of decline and foreboding? We'll ask, what do older people need, and how can we face up to what psychologists call the challenge of a completed life? Key factors in determining long life seem to be diet, exercise, access to clean water, good health care, and especially family closeness, community bonding, and faith in God. The Apostle Paul is clear that we can know ongoing spiritual renewal throughout our lives, even in the context of physical disablement, 2 Corinthians 4.16. However, because we are all mostly living longer, that's the quantity of life, are we living better, the quality of life? Are we paying enough attention to both the benefits and the drawbacks of growing older? Well, our answers to these questions may depend on our current state of health and where we are on the life cycle. Young people tend to think that they are indestructible. Older people well, we realize that we are not. First of all, then, some of the benefits of growing older. James Hollis, in his book, Finding Meaning in the Second Half of Life, writes this. The second half of life presents a rich possibility for spiritual enlargement, for we are never going to have greater powers of choice, more lessons from which to learn, or possess more emotional resilience, more insights, into what works for us. I think it's also true that older people who have a more complete vision of life and, the, and can access the significance of the beginning, middle and end of life's journey, they're often able to help younger people reflect on aging and maybe help them reassess their priorities and values. Another benefit of being older is that there can be a shift away from doing towards stillness, contemplation, reflection, and being. And this can give rise to a greater transcendence, i.e. a feeling of rising above earlier concerns and worries towards a greater connectedness with God. Well, Abraham was 75 years old when God called him to leave Haran and go to the land of Canaan. I was 75 years old this year, so that was the first time that I realized that Abraham was 75 years old when God called him to leave Haran. Simeon, as we've been reading, was an old man who was righteous and devout, and the Holy Spirit was upon him as he looked for the consolation of Israel. 
Anna was an 84-year-old widow from the tribe of Asher, we read, which means happy one. But she had experienced a lot of unhappiness in her life. Most likely married when she was about 15 years old, her husband died seven years later, so she had lived as a widow for around 62 years. No second husband, no children. However, her connectedness with God was remarkable, worshipping him 24-7 and talking about Jesus to all who would listen. Fifty years ago, I attended All Nations Christian College, which as you know is near Ware in Hertfordshire, and the main house there had been the home of the Buxton family, who moved there in 1868. A year after this, Lady Hannah Buxton, who was 86 at the time, she wrote a letter to her grandson, John Henry Buxton, which contained this prophetic prayer. She said that this place may ever be inhabited by faithful servants of God in and through Jesus Christ, and that it may ever be a habitation of God in the hearts of the inhabitants by the Holy Spirit, and Christ be honoured, confessed, and served, and this place be a fountain of blessing in the church and to the world. Well, God has wonderfully answered that prayer, because thousands of students have come from all nations to study there and gone to all nations to work and share the gospel. For Lady Hannah Buxton, Granny Buxton as she was called, life's meaning and purpose have become clearer in later life, together with what is important, and there was the desire to pass this on to the next and succeeding generations. So those are some of the benefits of growing older, but what are some of the drawbacks? Well, there is certainly physical deterioration. King Solomon, who probably wrote the book of Ecclesiastes when he was in his 70s, he gives a vivid account of this decline. The message version of Ecclesiastes 12, 1 to 5, uh, expresses this very well, I think. He says, Honour and enjoy your Creator while you are still young, before the years take their toll and your vigour wanes. Before your vision dims and the world blares, blurs, cataracts maybe, and the winter years keep you close to the fire. In old age, your body no longer serves you so well. Muscles slacken, grips weakens, joints stiffen, the shades are pulled down on, your, on the world, you can't come and go at will, things grind to a halt, the hum of the household fades away, emptiness syndrome maybe, you are wakened now by birdsong, hikes to the mountains are a thing of the past, even a stroll down the road has its tremors, your hair turns apple blossom white, adorning a fragile and impotent matchstick body. Yes, you are well on your way to eternal rest, while your friends make plans for your funeral. <laughs> People say they can't understand the Bible. Nevertheless, I think God gives most of us time to think through the implications of growing older and our approaching death. Bernard Cooper, in his book, The Bill from My Father, writes this, the realisation that we are growing older comes to most of us in variable increments. The way, that way, the full cargo of mortality doesn't sink the boat, but is brought on board in the form of manageable hand luggage. Physical deterioration, then, is one of the drawbacks of growing older. What about loneliness? Well, of course, the, more, the older we get, the more we experience the loss of family and friends as they die. My mother-in-law was 98 years old when she died, having lost her husband, brother, closest friends of church, those she went on holiday with, etc. But in her case, new relationships could be formed with her grandchildren and great-grandchildren. But loneliness continues to blight the lives of many older people. Uh, as well as younger people. It is a big contributor to physical, mental and emotional ill health. And we can define loneliness as a subjective, unwelcome feeling of lack or loss of companionship. 
It occurs when there's a mismatch between the quantity and the quality of the relationships we have and those we want. And then there's mental ill health. Well, mental ill health can take many forms, but the most common for older people at the moment is Alzheimer's. Currently, there are just over 40 million people with this disease worldwide, and the figure is expected to increase to 150 million by 2050. Alzheimer's is a, a, a disease of the brain for which at the present time there is no cure, but some drugs are now available which may help to slow down the progress of the disease. But this disease calls into question what it means to be a person and affects not just the person with the symptoms, but their entire family circle and friends. If you want to get inside the world of someone with dementia, I would recommend watching the 2020 film The Father, starring Sir Anthony Hopkins. He plays the part of an 80-year-old Welshman with the disease, and the film graphically shows both what he is experiencing and the impact it is having on his relationships, especially with his daughter, played by Olivia Coleman. <clears throat> However, as Christians we can ask, can Alzheimer's or any other form of mental illness separate us from the love of God? After all, God has engraved our name on his hand. Isaiah 49.16 Surely he remembers us, even if, we, if or when we are not able to remember him. And those with Alzheimer's don't usually lose their emotional memory. They are still able to experience love, joy, sadness, etc. Emotional memory can be accessed when cognitive memory fails. So singing, praying, worshipping, could all help the person reconnect with their faith and with God. As cognition fails, spirituality can flourish. I heard recently of an elderly lady who had a scientific background and throughout her life she had been unable to accept the Christian faith, believing it was incompatible with her scientific worldview. Then she developed Alzheimer's and all of her resistance simply melted away and she was able to embrace Christ. So what do older people need? Well, older people are not a separate species, but they have the same basic needs of people of all ages. The need to give and receive love, to be creative, to find hope, to accept the unresolved, to be included and to show gratitude. There is a need to tell their life story and pull all the strands together. This is about identity, integration and completion. There is a need to be listened to. I love listening to older people. They've got so much to share. There may be the need to seek healing, forgiveness, reconciliation and peace. There is a need to discuss and prepare for death. And they may also need to talk about legacy. A legacy is anything left or handed on by a predecessor and may be a, a material or a spiritual blessing. Jenny Goodman in her book Harvesting a Lifetime says, the experience of our latter years should be shifted from everybody expecting me just to wind down and disintegrate to a place of joyful conscious ripening with a revitalizing sense of focus and self-worth, a place from which to harvest the fruits of a lifetime. Psalm 92 verses, 1, verses 12 to 15 continues this theme of fruitfulness in old age. The psalmist says, The righteous will flourish like a palm tree, they will grow like a cedar of Lebanon planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish in the courts of our God. They will still bear fruit in old age. They will stay fresh and green, proclaiming the Lord is upright. He is my rock, and there is no wickedness in him. 
As older people come to the end of their lives, there is also to need the need to acknowledge the inevitability of unfinished business, the unsolved, the not knowing, the not understood, the painful encounters, the mistakes. Like Jesus on the cross, older people may cry out, Why? Another need older people have is to show gratitude. Gratitude is transformational and is part of our psychological immune system. It plays a part in how we cope with adversity. Gratitude therefore consists of acknowledging goodness in one's life, recognizing the source of this goodness and expressing thanks to these sources. Attitudes which mitigate against gratitude including include taking people and things for granted, having too high expectations which can never be reached, and assuming that we have earned and deserve everything that we've got. This latter attitude of ingratitude is demonstrated shockingly by Bart Simpson, Homer's son in the fictional family The Simpsons, where Bart says in a grace before a meal, Dear God, we paid for this stuff ourselves, so thanks for nothing. <clears throat> the need to show gratitude. If you have not, no one to show gratitude to, to, you are in trouble. Another need is to move freely from past, present and future. Remembering that the, remembering the past is important, but only if we focus on past positive events in our lives and don't get stuck with all the negative stuff from the past. Too much nostalgia can become painful and counterproductive. Furthermore, we should live most of our lives, I believe, in the present, enjoying today with all its gifts and possibilities as well as facing up to any challenges. But we also need to focus on our future destiny when God makes everything new. New bodies, new Jerusalem, new heaven, new earth. Behold, God says, I make all things new. 84-year-old Anna, she gave thanks to God, gratitude, and she spoke about the baby Jesus to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. This forward look is so important. What no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what no human mind has conceived, the things that God has prepared for those who love him. And one of the best antidotes to losing heart and becoming discouraged in the present is to look forward into the future Remember that our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal weight of glory that far outweighs them all. 2 Corinthians 4, 17 Another need that all the people have is to be included. You see, not only does God want his church to be international, he wants it to be intergenerational. Tragically, especially in Western churches, older people are not given enough respect and are often overlooked. Philip Newell in his book says, Old age is repeatedly devalued into an inferior state of being, regarded as a de decline or fall from the fullness of life. We have forgotten that the fruit for, we have forgotten the fruit that an old tree can bear, yielding an abundance that will far outweigh the crops of the young. Currently, America is one of the most age-diverse and yet age-segregated societies in the world. Mark Friedman, the founder of CoGenerate, an organization dedicated to bridging generational divides, writes, in the early part of the 20th century, we recognized society to make it we, we reorganize society to make it more efficient by creating laws and institutions 
that move young people into educational institutions, middle-aged people into workplaces, and older people into retirement communities and nursing homes. As a result, he says, generations stopped meeting and we created a nation that has largely lost a sense of the wholeness of life. In our churches, therefore, we need to integrate people of all ages, listen to each other and worship and dwell together. Sometimes church leaders can give the impression that they're more concerned about the children and young families who are absent rather than the older people who are present. But perhaps we can summarise this section on what do older people need by saying that they need supportive connections such as from clubs, churches, younger friends. They also need to control as much of their lives as, as possible. They need regular, reliable human contact and stimulation and practical help. They also need the opportunity to be creative and to feel and be included and have the opportunity to reflect on their life with satisfaction and a sense of worthiness. A few years ago I went to watch the London Marathon and whilst most of the young spectators were interested in the elite runners and whether there was going to be a world record, the thing that impressed me most, most was the 60, 70 and 80 year olds who were determined to finish the race and we were stationed just two miles from the end of the 26 mile course to see the steely determination the faces of these, <laughs> these older, older people, it was wonderful. And it struck me that what older people need is not someone to come physically and save them and take them out of the race, but someone to accompany, support and encourage them as they reach the finishing line. It's a mistake to only see older people as weary, exhausted individuals. We need to hear how their race has been run, what they experienced on the journey of life. Yes, some may stumble and fall, but they still have an important story to tell of how they run the marathon race, which is their life. The Apostle Paul writes, I've got my eye on the goal where God is beckoning us onward to Jesus. I'm off and I'm running and I'm not turning back. Philippians 3.14 in the message. And then a few months ago I was watching a London mini-thon. At the other end of the spectrum I went to watch our youngest grandson uh, complete in an athletics mini-thon which was for 8 to 12 year olds and there were teams from all over the southeast of England and to see the energy, the commitment and the discipline of these youngsters was wonderful. The place was absolutely buzzing. And is it not possible, I wonder, to combine the age, determination, experience of older people with the life and vitality of youngsters? Surely this is what we need to be aiming for in our families, our churches and our communities. Are there any age limits in the Bible, any age of retirement? Well, the only reference to retirement is in Numbers 8, 23 to 26, where the Lord says to Moses, uh, this applies to the Levites, men 25 years or old or more shall come to take part in the work of the tent of meeting, but at the age of 50 they must retire from their usual duties and work no longer. They may assist their brothers in performing their duties at the tent of meeting, but they themselves must not do the work. So that's the only reference to retirement in the Bible. However, in general, there is no age limit to being active and serving the Lord. As we've already seen, Abraham was 75 years old when God called him. Sarah was 90 years old when she had, even, when she had Isaac, even though she describes herself as worn out. Moses was 120 when he died, yet his eyes were not weak, nor his strength gone. Caleb, Caleb, who was 40 years old when Moses first sent him and Joshua 
to spy out the land of Canaan, he said 45 years later, when he was 85, I am still as strong today as the day Moses sent me out. I'm just as vigorous to go out to battle now as I was then. This is remarkable and seems to be down to the fact that he believed God's word and followed him wholeheartedly. In his book, The Only Earth We Know, Fred Kahn has the words of the song, the first verse of which poses two questions, and then there's a refrain. The first verse says, Was the world to end tomorrow, would we plant a tree today? Would we till the soil of loving, kneel to work and rise to pray? And the refrain is, pray that at the end of living, philosophies and creeds, God will find the people busy planting trees and sowing seeds. Let's pray. Lord, please help all the Christians to discern how, in this season of their lives, they can best serve their families, their local church, and the wider community. Show them which ministries and roles to lay down and which to take up, and how to enrich, enrich others, especially our young people, through their testimony of your faithfulness and love over many years. For Jesus' sake. Amen. And a promise from God. You who I have upheld since your birth and have carried since you were born, even to your old age and grey hairs, I am he. I am he who sustains you. Thank you, Lord. Amen.